Hello, thank you so much for joining us in the kitchen. It is 6.30 in BC and the sun is out and my ringer is on, so I'm gonna turn that off. Um, so our days are longer. We actually had probably one of the warmest days that we've had all year. Um, my car was saying that it was 21 degrees and uh, I decided to go out and pick some dandelions. So I have uh, bags and bags full of dandelions and I'm gonna be making dandelion jelly and I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. And I wish you guys could taste some if I could just figure a way to get it through that camera for you to taste it. Um, but if you guys don't know about the benefits, the health benefits of dandelions, just take a look at the shape and color of it and it will indicate to you what the health benefits are. So your body actually, um, through exposure to the sun, uh, it helps your body to produce vitamin D. And it's very, very good for you. Obviously, we notice over the winter time that our body is really lacking in energy. And we generally tend to want to curl into a ball. So when you look at flowers like a sunflower, like the dandelion, it looks like a big sunflower. It looks like a big sun. So it's telling you that it actually holds uh, nutrients that your body needs after the winter time, which is why it literally grows in abundance. And uh, so I've harvested a whole bunch of it. We're gonna have some fun with that. And then I picked up some purple dead nettle, which is actually a really powerful natural antioxidant. Um, it's high in vitamin C. It's really um, fantastic uh, for, it's an anti-inflammatory. It's really, really good for anybody who's dealing with seasonal allergies. So if you wanna look up purple dead nettle, um, take a look at the properties of that. It's actually, uh, it's multi-leafed and it has uh, purple leaves at the top going to green leaves at the bottom and sporadic little petals, which are really, really amazing. So just a little inspiration for the spring. So I would like to acknowledge that Alan has been out of the country for the last few days. So I want to welcome um, Alan Ogden, Mr. Glutathione Authority, who is incredibly educated in exactly what I was just talking about. Pulling like proper nutrients from plants that grow on this earth. His education is actually based in creating medicine from plants and herbs and, and natural derived stuff. Pharmacognosy. In pharmacognosy, exactly. So he has an incredible knowledge of plants and, and what they provide for us and also a knowledge of how the body works and how it implements the nutrients that our body needs and what it needs to really run at peak function. So obviously to assist in that knowledge, he has four nutritional degrees, a degree in geriatric medicine and then to top it off, last but definitely not least, an energy medicine degree. And then of course, more than 40 years of amazing wisdom and knowledge that he has, he has gained um, over the time that he's practiced, even though he doesn't even remotely look that age. So thank you so much for, for coming back. I'm glad you made it safely back from Florida. I am really happy to be back. And, it, and you have to clarify something. When you say 21 degrees, all of the Americans run for their, you know, their winter coats are like 21. That's, yeah. You think that's warm? Fahrenheit. 21, 21 degrees Celsius. Celsius is about 71. It's like room temperature. 71 degrees Fahrenheit. So, so people here are all stripping. Yes. They're all wearing shorts and t-shirts and tank tops and... Yes. Yeah. Like it's like it's really warm. And yeah, for Vancouver. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, for those of you who know, I like the temperature when it's about 34 degrees Celsius. That's really nice for me. So if you've ever been to Orlando in the summertime, yeah, it's kind of like that. That's nice and warm. It just makes me feel great. Anyway, I'm so happy to be in your kitchen. And uh, you did a great job in the dandelion and the purple dead net. Purple dead nettle. Dead nettle. It's um, in the mint family. Yeah, it's part of the mint family. It's right. And I remember going, walking through the fields with my grandma years ago and picking that and picking actual mint. And she would make gum out of that and give it to you to chew. And uh, I don't know if she really worried too much about the health benefits, but it was uh, just a cool thing to do with your grandma, to make gum out of the plants that you were... Something to keep the kids' mouths busy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. So, um, happy to have you here, of course. Harmony, for those of you who don't know, uh, Harmony and I met a number of years ago. We're, we're not counting the years anymore because it doesn't really matter. Um, but when I met her, she was brain injured, uh, suffering tremendously from a concussion, 
I got her taking collagen protein, then we got some glutathione in there, and all of a sudden I saw this amazing person emerge who started to use this, um, well, I didn't, I, I was going to say big brain, but I, <laughs> just <laughs> amazing brain. So she is taking emotion code, body code, pranic healing, hypnotherapy, she studies things extensively. And we're going to talk a little bit about that uh, and my experience with that in Florida tonight. But first of all, I have a question for all of you who are listening and we want you to type in your answer. So this is from the United States government and this is something that is written. We want you to guess the date that this was written. This is when the United States government decided that we supplementation was necessary. So here it is, here's the exact, this is US Senate document 74264. The alarming fact is that foods, fruits, vegetables, and grains now being raised on millions of acres of land that no longer contain enough of certain needed nutrients are starving us no matter how much we eat of them. So just in the comments, drop the date, the year, the year that you thought, think, that was written, that the United States government finally admitted that the soil that our nutrition is grown on is no longer sufficient to provide the nutrients for our food. And that we are what we eat, and we are also what we ate, eat. <laughs> we are what we ate, ate. So We have some guesses coming in, keep them coming. Keep coming. So we are what we ate, and what they ate. So in the United States, cows, porks, 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 pigs, cows, porkies, uh, they're finished on corn and soya beans. Soya beans, probably GMO, corn might be GMO. And so you the red meat in the United States contains a high level of sugar. Uh, even though when you eat it, you're not thinking you're eating sugar, probably getting a lot of sugar in the red meat in the United States. Uh, we don't do that so much in Canada, but uh, and then chickens are actually fed on different kinds of grains. They also get uh, meal, which is cornmeal, uh, and it's all meant to fatten them up. That's what it's meant for. So think about it, if you're eating the same stuff, grains, corn, whatever, if that's used to fatten animals, what's it doing to you? Anyway, how, how are we doing with the answers there? So we have 2010 from Suzanne. Uh, Don Westcott said 1952, uh, Rick McGrew said 1950, Valerie Fletcher is guessing 1966, so... And Suzanne Parker Camara, 2010? Yep, yep, I said that one. <laughs> wow. This was written in 1936. So the closest guess was Rick McGrew. 1950. By about this 14 years? So 1936, that was before the use of herbicides, pesticides, before Monsanto. So we can only imagine what our soil looks like now. Now, you might be interested to know that there was a study done, and there's a whole point to me telling you this, which is going to work right in with what I did in Florida, but there's a study actually done that shows that fruits and vegetables contain at a minimum 50% less nutrients than they did in 1950. That study was done in 1999. I'm sure that it's considerably greater than that now, uh, since we've had many floods, hurricanes, uh, just different natural disasters that have affected farmland in California, all along the Gulf Coast, in Florida, uh, basically all throughout the United States. There's been such tremendous weather changes over the last 15 uh, to 20 years that I'm sure that that's even worse than it has been uh, when the study was done. So anyway, I got, I had this amazing opportunity to go to Florida this past weekend, went to Disneyland, you know, just hung out, hung around. Disney World. Disney World. Is yeah, that, is that Disney what? World is in Florida, okay. Disneyland is in California. All the people who are Obviously. in the States will be like, uh, what? Obviously I didn't go there. Were that's you right. in California? Yeah. <laughs> Disney Hong Kong, Disney Hong Kong, it was Disney Asia anyway. Anyway, I was obviously not there, although I saw a lot of Disney stuff in the airport. Um, so what I was in Florida for is just so important. We had to bring this message to you tonight. 
a, a very, very close friend, dear friend of mine, who has two autistic adult children, got immunity for her kids, and I call them kids because she calls them kids, even though they're adults, she still calls them kids. She got them on immunity way back when immunity first came out in the market and saw mark, marked changes in their behavior, their cognition, their ability to function. And so she was, she was thrilled, obviously she was thrilled. She's a mom, she's thrilled. She decided to self-fund a study for other autistic moms. So she did it with a reason. She didn't want the VSI company to fund a study because then people would think that whatever result you got, you actually made up. Uh, you know, what you look for, you, you don't see a red Volkswagen until you buy a red Volkswagen, then you see red Volkswagens everywhere. So she wanted to be completely independent. So uh, I helped her write up the protocol for this study. We did that in the fall of last year. And then the very first person uh, to try immunity did so January 7th of 2018. And since that time, 50 children that are on the spectrum or have another type of injury. So they can be uh, vaccination in, injured. Uh, it could be a food, uh, an allergy type of injury that now appears and puts them on the, on the spectrum. Uh, it could be ADHD, it could be other things, but just children who are having trouble functioning uh, in this world, having trouble coping with life as we know it. And there's many, many, many of them. I got to meet a whole bunch of these parents. And I, actually, I shouldn't say parents, I got to meet a whole bunch of the moms. And wow, Harmony, holy moly. <laughs> I met fierce people. Uh, these people are incredible. Their determination, the investment they've made in their children. Uh, one lady that I spoke to, they have invested $250,000 in treatment for their children. Another one was more than that. Uh, another one with a couple of kids, they've even spent more than that over a number of years looking at all sorts of solutions. So these are women who had the courage, like you did, to not accept the prognosis for their child that the doctor wanted to give that child. They said, no, I'm not buying into that. And we're going to recover this child. It was amazing. So I got to meet some of the kids that have been on immunity. And I, of course, was not familiar with these children before immunity. I get to see kind of the after uh, effect of this. And it was just the, the energy, the, the, the hope, the, just the incredible thing. So tonight I, I just wanted to talk about this because literally in 50 children, 50 children that are all on the spectrum, all in various positions on the spectrum, so all from all ends of the spectrum, these kids that were put on immunity and every, without exception, so far without exception, have had a positive experience, a measurable positive experience. So in, in the study, we were looking, we're taking, we were looking at measurable changes, things that you would notice. So things like cognition, things like conversation, things like uh, mobility, things like social skills, um, just a whole bunch of different things. There was a whole bunch of different things that we, that we looked at and we looked for improvement. And, these kids all saw improvement in one or more of the areas that we were looking for. So 50 out of 50 is pretty good. Now, some, some of the children, when we first got them taking immunity, they went through a detox, so they got a little agitated, a little excited, uh, a little overstimulated. Um, some kids that are, are he have a lot of heavy metals uh, in them, and, and what we did with those kids is we actually reduced the dosage of immunity, gave the body a chance to adjust, and then you know raised the, the dose over a period of time to get their body to accommodate to that so that, uh, because that's the whole job of glutathione. So we need to kind of review what glutathione really is doing in these, in these situations and why it would cause that. So 
when, when you optimize your glutathione, now this does not work with molecular glutathione. I want you to know that. So fortunately, we had a lot of parents that were there who have used the traditional methodologies that doctors prescribe. So high dose short-term injection or high dose, um, one was making compounds and uh, they, would, they would have a, a, a compounding pharmacy, make a glutathione preparation and put it on the child's skin. Very, very high dose glutathione for just a few days every year. I didn't even know that was a thing. Yeah. Putting it on the skin? Putting it on the skin, having, trying to get it absorbed through the skin. So, I mean, I don't even want to go there because that is okay. such an inefficient and ineffective <laughs> way to administer That's like anything. trying to get something that like, okay, say you've got like heart disease and your arteries are all clogged up and stuff. It's like trying to resolve that by putting some type of heart medication on your skin yeah. and hoping that'll make it to your heart and your arteries and resolve that. Like, well, topically, really? Topically, yeah, the challenge is, and I, you know, most doctors would not understand this, is that 14% of your glutathione is held in your skin. So if you do put topical on... You get it, benefits. You get benefits. It's gonna be held by your skin. It's not gonna to get to your liver and so on. Anyway. Each and every cell in your body is actually programmed and able to produce glutathione when it has all three amino acids um, present in the right ratios, which is incredibly important. So when you understand that, where you put it, Especially if you just put it topically, the body's gonna go, cool, I'm just gonna utilize it right here. Thank mm -hmm. you very much, right? Mm -hmm. So it's incredibly important if you want it to work in within the body internally to actually get it to the body, like to the internal side of the body so that the body can utilize it where it needs to go. Absolutely. Um, so when if, if the product you're using says glutathione on it, L-glutathione, that is molecular glutathione. That is exogenous or made outside of the body glutathione. It may have come from plants, it may have come from animals, but regardless, it's not from the human body. And it's put together, it's either um, liposomal, so they've added some fat to it, which they hope will get it to absorb through the skin, um, or they put it in a spray, so you can spray it in sublingually. They put it in a capsule which goes to your intestinal tract and only 10 to 14% of the glutathione is even absorbed. But when it, even if it does get into the bloodstream, the challenge is at the cell membrane, there's no receptor site for glutathione. No receptor site for exogenous glutathione, glutathione from outside of your body. Yeah, when he says exogenous glutathione, it means that it is glutathione that is produced outside of the body instead of giving the body the building blocks that it needs and then just having it converted into glutathione, which I hope you guys understand, you already have glutathione in your body. Right. And your bo the glutathione that your body does have in it is personalized to you. My glutathione is different. Alan's glutathione is different. My son's glutathione is different. So it is unique, just like your facial features are unique. So taking an erogenous or exogenous, exogenous. erogenous, uh -huh. that's another term, oops, <laughs> an exogenous form or external form of glutathione and expecting it to turn into the same glutathione that's in your body when it's personalized to you, what's already in your body, it doesn't make a lot of sense. No, it doesn't, but that's some activity in the blood. So, and it's used extensively in medicine because they can charge $150 for an injection. It can make a lot of money giving people glutathione. Um, another thing that is used extensively is what's called NAC, N-acetylcysteine, which is... Um, Heavily endorsed, protected, and misunderstood. Yeah. The, the extreme amount of feedback, because um, we have a, a YouTube channel and we've done some videos and stuff like that, and uh, I manage all of our social media, and so I see a lot of the comebacks that come, uh, comments that come back, sorry, on NAC and, and everything else that we do. And it is amazing how people actually don't truly understand what NAC is and fiercely um, stand by what it has done for them. So I think that, I don't think that we've talked about this in quite a long time. So I think that it is something that's worth highlighting. Yeah, so you have, so that what they're trying to do is get the one amino acid that generally speaking, we're short of in our body. Glutathione is made out of three amino acids, 
we as humans have no method to absorb cysteine. So even though it's in broccoli and asparagus and spinach and you can read about it and people will write it up, you know, here you go, here's the, the 10 top foods you need to eat to optimize your glutathione. That's hogwash. Uh, the cysteine in that food is not absorbed in our intestinal tract. Very, very low amounts of it is absorbed. It doesn't have any impact. I've seen so many people have cancer who go on an asparagus diet. They go on a broccoli diet. Um, it's largely ineffective because you can't absorb that. Uh, you'd have to eat 50 pounds of asparagus uh, or 50 pounds of broccoli a day to have enough to have some kind of immunological impact. And I love broccoli, but seriously, I it's just, big. I don't think I could, there's not enough time in the day to consume that That's much. right. Yes. <laughs> Whether you like it or not. Here, honey, here's your wheelbarrow of broccoli for the day. Now, you eat that before it's done. <laughs> when you're already feeling sick. Yeah, exactly. It's just, it's irrational. Even if you make it into a smoothies, or smoothies, it would be many smoothies, it would be irrational. I, I actually... Um, Not to mention the fact that you'd be gas-powered. You would be gas-powered. No, <laughs> you, would, you, would, you would be... Uh, the raw roughage going through your system. Oh, man. You would be <laughs> I did a raw diet for 30 days and I was gas-powered. <laughs> it's green and gives you gas. It has to be good for you. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway. Um, so, we have to supplement. So, in... N-acetylcysteine was made as a drug. So if somebody says, I'm taking N-acetylcysteine, it's a natural product, they are wrong. Completely wrong. It is not a natural product. In the province that we are speaking to you from, it is a Schedule II drug. It should only be sold in pharmacies, although it is sold almost everywhere in, in health food stores, etc., etc. It is a Schedule II drug. So what they do is they take either pork bristles or chicken feathers and they put them through a very, very, um, well, the chemical process is amazing. What they put them, put that through the chicken feathers or the pork bristles or whatever they're using could be human hair to draw that one amino acid out of that combination of amino acids because your hair or a pork bristle, pr bristle or a, I was trying to say feather at the same time or a chicken feather, they were just made of protein. They're just protein. So they try to isolate that one amino acid. It takes a lot of chemistry to do that. Then they isolate it. That's more chemistry. This is the far, furthest thing from natural as you can possibly get. And, um, and people will still maintain, you can read on the web, it's natural. It is not natural. It doesn't exist anywhere. N-acetylcysteine does not exist anywhere in nature. You will not find it in a plant. You will not find it in an animal. It is not natural. It has to be made and it's cheap, uh, which is I think one reason why people like it. Um, when you open up a, a container of N-acetylcysteine, first thing, before you even take one, just take it to your nose and have a really good whiff of it. And take a deep breath. Take a deep breath. Just <laughs> suck it back and then ask yourself if that's natural. That's something that you want to put in your body. Yeah, it's funny that uh, everybody calls it NAC. And uh, I just want to point out that the N does not stand for natural. Right. Yeah. <laughs> in absolutely no uncertain terms. Yeah. So if we were to look at um, the building blocks of uh, what it is that is in the immunity to help to optimize glutathione, what's the difference? Because you're telling me that uh, the N-acetylcysteine comes from an animal source. Right. Right? So what about the amino acids that we're sourcing? So the amino acids that we source... Um, are vegetable amino acids. They're vegan. They're vegan. <laughs> um, it, and the reason it doesn't say vegan on there anywhere is because we put selenium in there. And selenomethionine, you can only buy from one company in the world. They own the rights to selenomethionine. And if you're going to use their product, um, it's, it's not a vegan product. It's a mineral, so it's really not... It's not not vegan, but it's not vegan. It's not really it's plant, mineral. it's not animal, it's, not plant, it's mineral. Animal. It's a mineral, but... So anyway, so the Harvard doctor that I met, what he discovered after years of research is that the amino acids need to exist in a certain ratio. And when they do, there's a receptor site on your cell membrane that recognizes that glut glutamine glycine and cysteine. Now it can be cysteine or cysteine. 
If it's cysteine, which is just two cysteine molecules attached together, it's called bonded cysteine. If they come to the cell membrane, your cell membrane grabs a hold of them and releases them into individual amino acids so that they can combine with the other amino acids to make glutathione. Your cell does it. It's genetically programmed to do this. When those three exist in a certain ratio, it happens automatically. The trigger mechanism for that is selenium. Selenium is responsible for detoxification. It's responsible for a lot of things in your body, but it's selenium that does that. It's selenium is really this, I'm going to say the, the real secret ingredient in this is the selenium along with the ratio of amino acids. When they arrive at the cell membrane, it automatically triggers a genetically controlled double enzyme process to make your glutathione. Like Harmony was saying, my glutathione is different than her glutathione. I can be around a bunch of people and not get sick. That Harmony might be around and she gets sick or vice versa. Um, I flew on an air, the airplane that I flew down to Orlando on, the lady sitting across the aisle from me, I thought she needed an oxygen bottle. She was coughing every five minutes. She would just like hork. I mean, it was just terrible. Um, she wasn't masked. She wasn't wearing, wearing a mask or anything. She was just sitting in there. I was sitting there thinking, here I am in this contained, you know, can. We're recycling the air. And yeah. she's just, you know, it's recycling her bugs everywhere for everybody to enjoy. <laughs> and so um, I sat there right across from her. I pulled out my, I pulled out a bottle of water. And so she could see me, I actually opened a container of immunity and put it in my bottle. And then I took out some energy and I opened and it up in my bottle. And then her, right? And then I shook, <laughs> shook it up, right? Kind of out in the aisle like this, you know, not, not being too obvious. And uh, anyway. And then you're like, cheers. Yeah, cheers. <laughs> anyway, I, 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 drank, I, I drank a whole bottle right after the flight. Um, and that was cool, right? So I don't have to, uh, and that's the, that's the cool thing. So I wanted to encourage my body to up its glutathione at that moment because I know I've just been exposed to who knows what. I don't know what she has. So, um, yeah, it's the best thing that you can do for yourself when you're on a plane and you're, and you know, the air is recycled. So whatever everybody's got going on, you're breathing it for however many hours you're on that flight. With yes. them. So, was, so uh, that flight was, was from Houston to, to Orlando for uh, over four hours. So by the time you get there, actually 95% uh, of the air has been recycled several times in the airplane. So we, uh, we are all breathing the same air which we do every day anyway. I mean, the air we're breathing right now, somebody has already breathed before us. To think which is that. actually something you can totally rabbit hole on. Yes. Because you want to. <laughs> there are people that have existed on the planet. I mean, if you think about it, we're okay. breathing the same air that the dinosaurs were breathing. Right. It's pretty cool. Pretty cool. Same water. Same water. Same water too. It's pretty cool. So what is glutathione actually doing for these kids? Why would it have such a, a tremendous effect? Well, first of all, most of these kids would have, if we measured them, and there's no convenient way yet, that's coming, we're working on it, we're making, trying to make that happen really hard, um, a really simple test to test glutathione, but we know that these kids would have low glutathione levels. Yeah. They would definitely have, so whatever, they had low glutathione levels and then whatever the trigger event was, whether it was the vaccination, whether it was food, whether it was exposure to some other allergen, their immune system literally could not handle it and boom, their, their, their immune system failed them in many ways. So just not, it's not only, the, I think the thing that people need to understand and I certainly learned more about when I was in Florida is the fact that it's not just the brain that's affected, their liver's affected, their kidneys affected. Yeah. Their body, they've had a, a severe immune failure uh, throughout their body. And gosh, if you want to learn something about this, just go talk to one of these moms that's had one of these children for the last 10 or 14 years. And believe me, they've studied. They, they know their stuff. And they know how to stand up for what they believe in. And uh, I really, really respect. I really respect them. It's exactly and, what I had to do when my son was diagnosed. And... The thing that um, that I had to do that was over and above was uh, actually look at who it was that was funding the books and the information that I was reading. Right. Because I hate to say it, but there are people out there that develop products and then they develop information for the women who like to research and are savvy. 
And so they make sure that the information they go to is going to convince them that the right decision is to consume the product. And so when you take it to the next level and you really look at where this information is coming from and then you source uh, reliable information from a credible um, authority, then you're actually able to get really great information and make the right decision from an empowered place. And obviously these women did exactly the same thing that I did. And they took their education and their research to the next level. So not only do they know what they're talking about based on you know, the information that they've been given, but they know where the information is coming from and they know that it's, they're not being led astray by certain companies that want them to consume certain things. Right. So, and one of the things I want to encourage everybody to do, if you're, if you're listening to this either now or on the replay or whatever, please, when you're researching things, use PubMed, P-U-B-M-E-D dot org, PubMed. Uh, PubMed is a repository for research that's researchers from all around the world. So that's the people that are actually in the trenches doing research. They have nothing to gain or lose. Um, sometimes they do. Sometimes you'll find uh, there's one particular company out there that has a pill that says, they, it says it optimizes glutathione. And when you look at the information that's on PubMed about that, it's all funded by the company, uh, which just raises my hackles a little bit. Um, because uh, um, just so you know, all of the inf all of the information done on the amino acid therapy that we put in immunity was not funded by the company. It was always funded by a grant uh, to a university to a professor who was doing research. So all independent research that went into this, just like this study that we did in Florida, was done independently. And kudos to the to the lady who took it upon herself to make available 50 boxes of immunity. So one box for 50 children each, so the parents could try it for a month. And the reason she did that is because these parents have been through the ringer. They've spent, one of the parents I was talking to there, they had a two hour point doctor appointment. It was $1,700 for a two hour doctor oh. appointment. And at the end of it, I, I'll let, someday we'll let her tell her story. So. The end of that doctor's appointment is just the most incredible thing. You can't even imagine what the doctor said to these uh, people about their son. Um, other people, twelve hundred dollars per doctor appointment. They, they, you know, they're just they're searching for answers because you know they do feel that it's somehow they are responsible for what happened to their child and they want to fix it. They want to recover their child, and I want them to recover their child. I'm so grateful to be part of this. And to know that we have had such great success and that we can sit here today and we can say to people, listen, if you know somebody that has a child that's on the spectrum, do them a favor, gift them a, even a week or two of this product. And most of the kids saw some result with the first dose, first and second dose. Now, once again, some of those kids, we found out that it was too much and we reduced the dose. But for many of those kids, the very first dose, there was marked changes that they could write down as a, as a parent saying, my son or daughter used to do this and today that did not happen. Um, they used to be a runner and today they're not. Uh, they used to not be uh, conversant and now they're conversational. Uh, they used to be really uneasy in social situations and now they're relaxed. So they had things that they could measure that were life-changing events. And the reason for that is the glutathione, first of all, starts the detox process. So if they are exposed to heavy metals, and many of us, sorry to say this before, but many of these children are heavy metal laden. And how that happens is uh, still a mystery, but we know that our air is full of chemicals. It's literally full of chemicals. And you Hold know, on. Rick was saying, how could you tell that it was too much product when the kids were getting too much? Um, the parents know. Believe me, the parents know. Because they, they will, their uh, symptoms will exacerbate. Is that a big word? <laughs> the symptoms will become slightly They get worse. worse. They get worse. The sim so, <laughs> so not all the symptoms, just one or two. Usually the kids get a little uh, anxious or they get a little... Um... Yeah, what happened to you when you took too much, Alan? <laughs> I, got, I got really anxious. He had a little bit of an anxiety attack. I sure did, yes. Yeah, and he was stuck in a place where he couldn't really go anywhere at the moment. He was text messaging me. 
So yeah, typically what happens is because the body is, um, because it doesn't have enough glutathione um, in it on a daily basis, it's being overwhelmed with toxins and stress and such, and it's not able to function the way that it wants to. And essentially what's happening is, is George, the little guy who looks after your NFR2 switch, which is all of those switches that control your defense system, gets woken up. So you give him the amino acids, all of a sudden he's like, bing, I'm awake, let's go, 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 go. And then he runs to the switchboard and he goes, ding, 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 and he turns all of them on and then your body goes, Wee! and it goes to work and all the defense systems get kicked in and it's like, oh my gosh. So it goes to work really hard, really fast to balance everything that it's overwhelmed with. All of the toxins and all of the stress and all of the heavy metals and all of the bacteria and the viruses and whatever else it's got going on. The body's just like all of it's on and it's go time now. And so it can create a little bit of a heightened sense of exactly what I'm just showing you right now. It's high energy. It looks like a little bit of anxiety, but it's just the body just going go, 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 go. Yes. So it's a good thing. But when you're already dealing with a child that's got um, autism and has already kind of so, can have hyperactive um, tendencies and will run away on you and can act out and can well, sensory sometimes, overload, right? Exactly. It it can uh, you know obviously create um, undesirable um, results initially, and so when you if you start to see that going on, they're really really high energy and seeming a little bit full of anxiety. Uh, what's going on in their body is actually beautiful. And, and amazing because it's, its defense system is fully kicked in and doing its thing, which I fully celebrate. However, obviously, you know, it's hard on the parents and it's going to be hard on the kid at first. So you just want to lower the dose uh, till you find the right mark and allow uh, the body to adjust and for that defense system to maybe just kick in a little bit more slowly so it's not creating so much of a <gasps> sensation in the child. Right? Have some tea. <laughs> just to give you a, a visual example of what happens yeah. so, <laughs> so that's I, how you know when I uh, experimented on myself with the amino acids so I got just the straight amino acids the maximum dose is 3.2 grams in a day and I took 7 grams of the amino acids so yeah, a little more than twice as much uh, as the <laughs> upper level recommended dose. Yeah, you were yeah. so excited. I was very excited. Yes, indeed. <laughs> I was very excited. I was. Uh, it was. It was incredible. What? Uh, how quickly my body wanted to detox. Yeah. Like it really wanted to detox now. Yeah. Uh, so I could feel it in my liver. Like I could feel my liver just working and dumping stuff into my intestinal tract and. Yeah, it was not a good thing. So I've never done that again. Just so you know, like once is enough. <laughs> Uh, for sure. <laughs> well, your body's only going to do that once you've balanced uh, your glutathione, and if you're taking it consistently, then it's just going to stay balanced. Candice was uh, Candice Boy saying, "So incredible as a pediatric physical therapist, this makes me cry happy tears as my heart is bursting with hope and joy." It's really, really amazing to hear that, and I just want to bounce off a question: um, Is energy okay for a six-year-old? I usually share my immunity energy combo with my son. Is that okay? So I'm assuming that this is the six year old. Yeah, I'm sure. sure. I would absolutely say there's no reason why um, your child can't take that. We don't have to, I mean, I, I know that it says energy on it, um, but I want you to be very clear on, you know, what is in here. Really look at the ingredients of what's in here. So we're looking at L-arginine, we're looking at GABA, we're looking at D-rooibos. Um, which is a natural uh, sugar that feeds the brain, uh, Siberian ginseng, which um, gives you energy, but again, it's a root, it's, it's natural, um, guarana seed, green tea leaf extract, arctic cloudberry, and lingonberry. So um, obviously there's green tea left, uh, leaf extract in there, and I want you guys to really understand because this actually came up um, when we launched the True Keto um, as well. The green tea leaf extract um, is actually just using um, the extract that gives you a little bit of um, more energy, but it doesn't have uh, the ingredient in it that is essentially causing some health issues with, with a lot of other people, which is the catechins. That's just what I was going to say. Yeah. So um, if you drink green tea in excess, you can cause yourself some problems. 
So it's definitely not something, um, and a lot of people that are taking the any uh, products that have green tea extract and such in it, they're not taking the catechins out of it, which is why a lot of people are having some issues. So you can feel safe um, that this process has been done properly. And um, I really like what you're doing uh, by doing the immunity and the energy and then sharing it because that way your child is getting half of a dose and your child is obviously half your size. So, you know, I, I don't a, what, see Plus it. a really interesting thing is until kids are about 12 years old, uh, caffeine actually has the opposite effect on them. To, what? To us, yes. So I didn't even know that. Yeah. I learned something new. Every time he opens his mouth, I swear. Yeah. <laughs> well, actually, how we discovered this is, is kind of a cute, cute story. Yeah, tell me. Did you just like get a room of dude, like preschool kids and just no. like feed them a bunch of caffeine and they'd be like, let's see what happened to the hamsters. Don and, <laughs> and I took a vacation to Hawaii and when we came back to get our kids, um, they were drinking Coca-Cola and uh, we're like, you gave our kids Coca-Cola. Oh my gosh. We're like, really? So well, much sugar. Well, they wanted some, you know? Okay, that's a really good reason, right? And, and so we're thinking like hyper, like, Hyper doodle, hyper noodle doodle, but um, so I was really concerned, and so I actually where my uh, my drugstore was, we had a pediatrician there. So I went and talked to the pediatrician, and she kind of smiled and said, um, "You might want to go look that up and see that caffeine in children in small quantities." So they didn't get a lot of coke, but they did get some. But caffeine in small quantities in children actually has the opposite effect of put them to sleep. So if you want to knock them out... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> don't use Coca. Just don't use Coca-Cola. <laughs> anyway. Um, there's actually a really great question that just came up. Um, and it's, what about Asperger's? Can this help with Asperger's as well? Yeah, it can. So, so let's, let's just look at all of these. Like, there's Asperger's. There's... ADHD. ADHD autism. Like, there's all these things that are kind of all on the same... The developmental delay the developmental disorder. Developmental delay disorders. And what we what we now know is that usually it's caused by, first of all, a failure of the immune system, then a, an overload of toxins in the body, and a high inflammatory, like their inflammatory markers are going to be off the chart. Yeah. So what does glutathione do? Glutathione is responsible for detoxing. Glutathione actually has the ability, by using the amino acid cysteine, to go into a cell and capture mercury, cadmium, lead, zinc, aluminum, other things that can be there, heavy metal toxins that can be there, and it can take them out of the fat. So metals are easily absorbed through the skin because our skin has fat in it, so they're easily absorbed in our skin. They get into our bloodstream and they migrate to our brain because our brain is 60% fat or more. The more fat you have, the better off you are. So they migrate to the brain, the brain and then they're stuck in the fat. So low levels of glutathione in the brain means that you have a lot of pattern interrupt uh, and a lot of pattern disruptions because of the heavy metals. There's a lot of electrical confusion in the brain. So when you give glutathione, it actually can go in and start taking out the heavy metals. Now it's not going to take them out all in one day. And this is something that I, I'm not sure I emphasize down in Florida, but I'm going to emphasize it here, is you can, you will experience continual benefits the longer you optimize glutathione. So there, there is a point where you have completely optimized the cellular ability or the cell's ability to manufacture glutathione. That can take a period of time depending on what level of injury, what level of toxicity, etc., etc. But the longer you take glutathione, the better the results will become, and then they will reach a peak at some point. Um, Which means that you'll just stop aging. That's right. And you'll stay the same age. Yeah. So when you die, they'll be like, this doesn't make sense. She looks 30. I can't. I don't. This may, oh. Like, you basically just, like, cure. Like, what do you call? Oh, I'm thinking of um, the share. Because she's had so much work done, I'm pretty sure that she's not going to decompose. I'm pretty sure. But no. this is like the natural version to just stop the aging process. <laughs> yes. Yeah, glutathione actually determines the amount of cellular death and the speed at rate of cellular death. So optimizing your glutathione has the 
the potential to extend your life. Um, it is that important. But 30 to 50 percent. So with these kids, what it's doing, first of all, it's detoxing heavy metals. Second of all, it's reducing the inflammatory response. It's, it's taking down this gigantic amount of inflammation. So if you had a child that was vaccine injured, you, you know that they either grab their head or they grab their legs or they started to rub their body, they rub their belly on the ground or they did something because they had no way of telling you that they were burning up literally inside. Their head was on fire, their legs were on fire, their body was on fire somewhere and that's just the inf inflammation. So when you have that amount of inflammation in any disease, doesn't matter what we name it, inflammation is involved and glutathione is responsible for reducing inflammation. So you talk about anything, you can talk about MS, you can talk about fibromyalgia, you can talk about uh, chronic fatigue, you can talk about cerebral diseases, cerebral palsy has even been, we're, we're not, we're, right now we're doing a small study here in Vancouver on ALS and using a, uh, uh, optimizing glutathione in, in some ALS patients to see the effect of that. So, um, I mean, there, there's just so many things that glutathione does, it's almost impossible to give it the credit that it needs and you really have to experience, experience it. And that's what I love about what they did in Florida, Florida is by donating, by giving a sample, one or two samples out to the parents, they allowed them to see and ex see what their child would experience. And I, I can say that not only did the children experience something, but you know, any of the parents that also tried the immunity felt the benefits as well and wanted to be on the product. I have said for a long time that if you're only going to take one supplement, let it be something that optimizes your glutathione. And I, I'm saying that with real conviction uh, after being there and being with, you know, like 40 moms who, they're, they're fighters, they're, they're just these amazing people. I'm, I'm so privileged to meet these people. Uh, I, I've never cried so much, seriously, in a weekend. I've never cried so much because you'd hear their story, you just you couldn't help yourself. You just want to cry, and then to know that you they would take something that would help, you would cry again because it's like wow. Then there's hope, there's relief for this, and uh, so we're here tonight just to encourage you, to, just to you know, if you know somebody, really give them a couple sticks of this stuff. It's easy to take. And if you know their child is extra sensitive, or if it's an adult and they're extra sensitive, then just take a smaller amount, like take a stick and use a third of it um, and, and divide it over three days for that person so that you don't cause that extra amount of excitation. And, but literally get them to try it. This, you know, when this first came out, uh, Rick Hagar was one of the people and John Buswood was another, he said, in all the years they've been involved in the direct sales industry, this is probably the best product that they have ever seen coming to the market. And after this weekend, I'm just convinced that we have something here that is just so powerful. It tastes good. The thing is, it tastes good and kids will take it. You know, these kids- And it's purple. And it's purple. <laughs> these, these, ki these kids are used to taking all sorts of stuff that doesn't taste good. And you know why most herbal supplements are in capsules. It's because they taste horrid. If you've ever been to a Chinese medical doctor and they make you up a tea with herbal extract, it's going to taste bad. Just absolutely guarantee you it's going to be bitter. It's going to be really bitter tasting. Um, and so that's why they encapsulate a lot of things is to get it past your taste buds. This tastes good. It, it works good. It works within minutes. So that's the other thing that we heard over and over and over again is, you know, we, we gave a dose of it, we gave this to our child, and within 15, 20 minutes, we're seeing the effects. So, I don't, you know, it, 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 was, it was just a phenomenal, phenomenal experience, and we're gonna be talking more about that. The other thing about healing your brain and getting your brain back to functioning at a higher level, you, you know, you need omega fat, you need omega acids. And one thing about omega acids, and make sure you're not taking omega-6 Kids do not need additional omega-6 fatty acid. They're already getting it in their food. We have no real use for omega-6 fatty acids in our body, we don't need it. So omega-3s are the most important. Omega-3s, if you, if you 
um, actually give your immunity along with a little omega-6 fatty acid. So what is that? Olive oil, uh, something that tastes good, could be olive oil, could be a little flax oil. I, I use a different kind of oil, but that actually enhances the absorption of the amino acids. Um, not that they necessarily need to be enhanced, but it does enhance the absorption of the amino acids. And it also helps with the, the minerals, the vitamins and minerals to cross over the intestinal tract as well. So a little omega-3 uh, fatty acids with um, the immunity will also increase its effectiveness and speed up how quickly it works. Here's another thing that I, I discovered. When I was at the Orlando airport, um, food, food options, and, and everybody's been at an airport, you know that your food options are limited. Is it gonna be fast food or fast food? Or faster food? I mean, that, that's the choices. Uh, even, even the restaurants that are in there are used to making food fast for people because they're going to catch a plane. So yeah. even though it might have a, a, a name that you might go and sit in a Friday night and have a dinner, the one in the airport is not going to be the same. They're, it's just fast food or faster food. And so I had some time, so I'm like, I don't know, really know what I want to eat here. So I just went and got something. I'm not, I'm not really going to say what it is, but <laughs> I went and got something to eat. Because I was going to be uh, about nine hours flying home, uh, which is which is a long time, and um, this is probably the first time that I wish I would have bought airplane food rather than airport food. But immediately after I ate it, I started to feel kind of not so good. What I did, um, because this is, this is then this is a great option. So if you're in a situation where you're somebody that you react to food and you get um, food poisoning really quickly. Um, actually, I just mixed up some immunity. I, so I, I had a bottle, water bottle, I mixed up some immunity. I actually put energy in it as well, but you can do this just with immunity. Um, I didn't have, I had mixed it up and I drank some, so I didn't have very much left. But as soon as I felt my stomach going sideways on me, I actually drank what was left in the bottle and boom, that was gone. It was just literally gone. So what does that tell me? Well, when it tells me that there was some kind of um, something not good in that food, uh, I'm not going to say that was it. causing an inflammatory response. It was just causing an inflammatory response, and, and immediately the inflammation was gone. And what does optimizing your glutathione do? It takes away inflammation. Exactly. So, so so it worked really really good. I was so ex I was just so pleased that I had my immunity with me. I had some water, had a little bit. I drank it, and boom, that that was gone. And if you circle that back to the brain, mm -hmm. concussion or the lack of the ability to be able to function properly because of certain toxins and heavy metals and stuff like that being in the brain, it's causing inflammation. Okay. And you know, me having obviously being the one who's the expert on concussions over here and brain injuries from what I had to go through, of course he is from a different standpoint because he had to go through something that affected his brain as well. But um, there is really nothing like getting the proper uh, amino acids into the body to allow for the body to optimize its own glutathione because when I took exogenous um, or external glutathione, my brain did not completely function properly. And it wasn't until uh, we actually went on a path to discover uh, the amino acids and then I started taking that that all of a sudden my brain came back and I was able to study again and my wit came back and I was able to, you know, I was able to have those quick responses when people said stuff. And for a long time, I wasn't able to do that. And I was so used to uh, being able to respond really quickly when somebody would say something, but the, it just wasn't there. Words weren't there. And it was so frustrating. So I have an extreme love for that purple box. And it's not just because it's purple. You know, it, and it's not just because it's Art Deco, which is also one of my favorite art styles, you know, like they did put so much work into um, really designing this product and, and putting it out there in such an incredible way. And I'm telling you, I had nothing to do with the color of the box. It just worked out that way. But everything that's in it is also why it's my heart and soul and why I am so proud to be representing this because this product and what is in it gave me my freaking life back. It allowed me to be able to function again, allowed me to be able to have the quick comebacks. And 
be able to study all the things that Alan was saying that I, that I came back to. And you know how he said that I learn really quick. And the reason that my brain became a sponge again, and I'm able to absorb information really quickly and retain it and regurgitate it, is because I've optimized my glutathione the right way. And secondly, for any of those parents that have kids that are just taking immunity, which I absolutely heart and soul love in a big, big way, the way that my body started to heal itself was getting collagen yeah. into the system. And I want you guys who haven't explored that option yet to really understand how important getting collagen into the body is when it is trying to heal itself, when it's been bombarded by all sorts of stuff. Because the body does use collagen to heal itself. It's not just composed of collagen, but it's one of the ways that it heals itself. So it needs collagen in order to be able to get the healing process to be revved up. It's like putting fuel in the car so it can go. So these little guys, these tiny little candy chews that taste so delicious, and you can throw in your purse, you can throw in your pocket, you can throw in the kids' backpacks. And it, I mean, it tastes amazing too. I mean, I was just, I gave it to one of my girlfriends and she was like, she's like, this reminds me of like toffee or something. Like it's so amazing, but it's so much better for you. This is four grams of hydrolyzed collagen protein. And they use papaya enzymes essentially to hydrolyze it. So to break down the amino acids so that it's readily available for the body to use. And seven years of development came, went into developing this product and you can you can research where it was sourced and it is incredible because most of the products that are out there don't have all of the collagens in them and where it is sourced is actually not as doesn't make it as easy for your body to absorb it be it uh, from the sea or from plants and stuff this is actually and and from bones which essentially aren't they're dead so this is sourced from the live juicy dermis of the skin, live juicy cells. So if they're alive like that when they're harnessed and they're bioidentical and bioavailable as a result of using papaya, what? That's amazing. Yeah. And then they used a candy company because they know how to do things right, but for the first time they're working with products that are actually good for the body. And then put these amazing elements together and then added the vitamins through the arctic cloud brain and the lingonberry to allow for the body to be able to actually utilize the collagen where please tell me where you're going to find that on the market because most of the time you're getting collagen by itself right. it's one collagen and it doesn't have what it needs for your body to be able to utilize the collagen this beautiful little thing your pocket protein goes with you and you can consume it and it is your healing agent in many different ways this is what started the healing process this is integral for people that are dealing with, yes, concussions, but it is incredibly integral for those that have autism, ADHD, Asperger's, the list goes so on, right? And you know, those kids don't get much protein, and that's a, it's a super, super way to get protein. And here's another thing about collagen protein. It's low in leucine, isoleucine, and methionine. Yes. Those are all associated with develop, developmental um, challenges, the damage, uh, the high levels of, of those uh, go down the TOR pathway and the TOR pathway um, ultimately leads to mutated cells, which can be cancerous, they can be just damaged cells. So uh, collagen protein is excellent for children. If you go to children, they love it. Anyway, we, we've been an hour, so did we get all the questions? No, here? we haven't been an hour because we went on a few minutes late. Oh, did we? <laughs> <laughs> but I just I know that you guys are really excited about what's going on with immunity and I'm incredibly excited about the information that's come down the pipeline but I just want to open doors for people that are excited about the immunity and you know to give you guys an opportunity to understand how synergistically optimizing your glutathione and then also uh, getting collagen in your body is and for me that was the secret combination that really took my healing to the next level so you know, and really, it's one of those things, if you're thinking about getting pregnant, you should be taking both of these products. And they're totally safe for your kids to be consuming as well. In fact, they love it. And my animals do as well. I give them, I cut them up and I give them to my birds. And they'll hold them with their little beaks and chew them up and destroy them. And it's, it's really fantastic. If I actually leave these on the counter, um, they'll actually try to steal them from me and chew through the wrapper to get at them. So... <laughs> 
animals absolutely love these and do need uh, the collagen, just not the chocolate. Definitely not the chocolate. So they only eat um, the orange or the lingonberries. So I really, really appreciate all of you guys for uh, for joining us. And I'm, again, like I said, really, I have so much gratitude for the mother who, um, you know, funded this project and for the study to be done. And I'm incredibly excited to hear that there are so many other mothers out there that are being proactive and not just listening to what the authorities are telling them and they've obviously gotten rid of or didn't even have white coat syndrome and are doing their own thing and standing up for their children and doing what is right, not what somebody else is telling them is right. That's right. Be your own authority, please. Nobody is your guru. You know what you need. You know what your child needs. I would say without exception, um, and just, you know, in my final sort of analysis here, listening to the stories, every one of the fair parents felt abandoned by the medical system. Uh, not just let down. They felt completely abandoned by the system, um, completely rejected by the system. And... You know, when that happens, where are you going to go? I mean, you've been led to believe that the person in the white coat knows everything. And when they abandon you, where do you go? And so, you know, there's a whole system of, of doctors and care providers and people that have now come out of the woodwork. It's a phenomenal, phenomenal story. Um, it needs to be told. And we're so, it's so cool. You, you mentioned this. When we go to heal, our body sends inflammation to a damaged area. And then it kind of makes a halogram, if I can use that term, with collagen. So, and then it uses that to actually fill in. So collagen is necessary for healing of any tissue anywhere. So it's very good for your brain. It's very good for your cardiovascular system. Uh, very good for your, your intestinal tract. Um, so yes, this is a one-two punch that can't be beat for sure. So. And one of the mothers was actually mentioning um, that... I just want to go back for two seconds into my amazing comments. I'm trying to remember. I think it was Candace um, mentioned that uh, the collagen and the immunity are really amazing. And it's so it takes so much out of you mothers who are looking after these kids that have these um, challenges as a result of being bombarded by all of the stuff they're being bombarded by. So while you're giving these kids these supplements, please love yourself too. Because I don't want you guys to get run down as a result of the fact that you're spending all of your time and money and energy on making sure that these kids get what they need. If you don't get what you need, you can't look after your babies. So please put yourself first and make sure you get some of the stuff that's in that beautiful purple box in your system as well because it'll really help you to have what you need in order to be there for your angel and to keep that brain running, that amazing, beautiful brain that you have running so that you can keep on top of the research and the information and stuff because you are that baby's advocate. And I have so much respect for you guys for doing so. So thank you so very much. And we look forward to um, connecting with some of these mothers and hearing some stories and uh, you know getting some of these guys onto our live events. I think it would be really fantastic. Yeah, it would be. Absolutely. Yeah, so we'll see you guys again next week, 6.30 BC time. <laughs> and uh, please feel free to uh, share and post this video wherever you want. I'm going to take and post it on our YouTube channel um, for anybody that's not on Facebook. But share it anywhere you want to. This information is absolutely always accessible and open sourced. So I love all each and every one of you. Appreciate all of you for being here. And we'll see you again next week.